What's up, quarantine people? What's up, quarantine people? What's up, quarantine people? What's up, quarantine people? Um, to, yesterday we announced that we re we reached ten subscribers. Um, yes, that's right. We have finally reached ten subscribers. We've reached uh, two digits on our channel, and in honor of that, YouTube mailed to us the Penny Award for reaching ten subscribers. And it was uh, delivered to me today by Pennywise on a tricycle. Thankfully, he didn't kill me. But here it is, yeah. It, we'll have this around hanging on our wall somewhere. And hopefully you can help us move beyond the Penny Award, but, you know, as a start, and something to celebrate. So, yeah, thank you guys for that. If you want to contribute to our channel, if that's something that you're interested in doing, we have a link in the description below where you can contribute some ideas or content or whatever whatever you really want to do. Um, it's uh, it's going to be in the link below just for some sort of informative, enlightening information that you might have or some sort of creative ability that you can contribute to help be much appreciated. Uh, if not, that's totally fine too, but just throwing that out there. In the meantime, this video is about memes. But not just any memes, the world's first meme. So let's dive right into that. During the Second World War, a little man with a bald head and a big nose peeking over the top of a wall started appearing all over surfaces throughout the world. The inscription beneath him read, Kilroy was here. U.S. servicemen seemed to find this traveling nomad wherever they were encamped or stationed. It is believed that U.S. soldiers would draw the picture with the intention that the viewer would carry on the cartoon message to another place. The most outrageous aspect of the graffiti was not really what it said, though that was considered quite perplexing, but rather where it would show up. It would always seem to be discovered in hard to reach spots, in areas that just seemed impossible to access. Another aspect of intrigue is the fact that Kilroy's identity remains a mystery, if not an ur urban legend. So was there an actual person named Kilroy, you might ask? Well, according to some sources, a shipyard worker and rivet inspector from Quincy, Massachusetts named James J. Kilroy was rumored to be the name of the legendary character, though this remains inconclusive. James was paid by a number of rivets that were checked and would often record his work with a chalk mark. In order to avoid the marks being removed or erased by other dock workers, it is said that he would inscribe, Kilroy was here, on the machinery. After noticing the puzzling message, the GIs began relaying the message on other surfaces, at first treating it as a good luck charm. Soon, the character became somewhat of an icon, as he would often increase the morale of the men who were only too eager to get their minds off the war. They eventually began using the character to log where they went, laughing in amusement at the peculiar <laughs> figure who managed to arrive everywhere before anyone else. One article from Life seemed to note this irony, stating that whatever beachhead they stormed, they always found notices chalked up ahead of them that Kilroy was here. While the servicemen viewed it as a chance to humor themselves, the enemy viewed the character with suspicion. Who was this weirdly drawn man? Who is this Kilroy fellow? They would wonder. It is said that Japanese soldiers would find Griff his graffiti scrawled on some surface and reported to their superiors, fearing that it had some hidden message. German intelligence would find Kilroy on captured American equipment and would report their findings to Adolf Hitler, who allegedly believed that Kilroy was the name of a high-level Allied spy. Even fellow Allied leaders were befuddled, as Stalin was rumored to have found Kilroy was here in the VIP restroom at the Potsdam conference, asking fellow aides accompanying him, who is this Kilroy fellow? While Kilroy was considered offbeat and unusual at the time, the Graffetto was not the first one to circulate throughout the world. 
That distinction goes to Australia during World War I, with their version entitled, Fu Was Here. That makes Fu 25 years Kilroy's senior. Fu was chalked on the side of railway carriages and typically any Australian encampment during the Great War to end all wars. It was oddly enough viewed as a gremlin by the Royal Australian Air Force and it is believed that it was an acronym for Forward Observation Officer, or FU. While FU beat Kilroy by 25 years, the UK came up with their version through the war before America had even joined. Mr. Chad, or Chad as he was called, would often appear on surfaces with a slogan like, What? No sugar? Or something similar, complaining about rations and shortages. The complaining phrases were used quite prominently before Chad came, even came to the scene. The character that appeared would have a single curly hair that appeared like a question mark, and as you can see, it crossed over his eyes. It is believed that the inventor of this character was an electrician who served with the ground crew, as his character loosely resembles a diagram representing an electrical circuit. To add weight to this theory, Australians oftentimes found him with plus and minus eyes, and a nose and ears, and nose and ears resembling a distorted sine wave. Chad was mostly used by the RAF and civilians, and his name changed throughout military compartments as he was known by the British Army as Private Snoops and in the Navy as the Watcher. Apparently this led to a dispute between departments over who came up with this character first, which was finally resolved when they agreed that the character first really appeared in 1944. The drawing's origin also remains unknown, though some think it may have been drawn by a cartoonist named George Edward Chatterton, or Chat for short. Chat may have evolved into Chad, though this remains inconclusive, as does almost everything else. Another idea suggested that the character resembled Alice the Goon, who appeared regularly in the Popeye comic strip in the 1930s. This has some merit to it, as another name that circulated for Chad was the Goon. Eventually, however, Chad was retired and quit appearing as rationing began to decline and the joke seemingly lost its purpose. Different versions continued to appear for Kilroy, with, with names like Herbie or Clem in Canada, Overby in Los Angeles, Flywheel, the Jeep, amongst others. In an advertisement for Toy Kilroy's in the 1940s, the company also used names like Clem, Heffinger, Luke the Spook, Som, and Stinky. Oh boy. Uh, despite the completion in Despite the completion involving the original claimants and the evolving names of the character, Kilroy remained consistent and unchanged throughout the war years. The other names would come and go, and the earlier versions of the character were only used for a short time, and they only retained their significance regionally. The fact that Kilroy remained relevant for so many years during the, uh, was quite impressive at the time. A cult-like icon for many in post-war America, he became a national treasure to many that served in the war. GI veterans would continue to use him by placing him on bathrooms, beaches, and walls throughout the world. The cartoon became almost synonymous with the defeat of the Axis powers and the success of the Allied forces. You can even find him lurking around at the National World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. Over the course of the years, Kilroy started to lose steam, maintaining a bit of a comeback during the Korean War before fading into obscurity shortly thereafter. Today, the gra that graffito that was drawn out throughout the battlefields of World War II is now considered to be the world's first circulating meme. Having gained traction in a time where the concept of such a thing was novel and different, Occasionally, our little friend will pop up in the media, like in the latest case with an appearance in the Cartoon Network show Adventure Time on Fenn's Passport. Apparently, there was even a horror film directed by Kevin Smith lately that involved him. There was even a song in the 1940s that was written about Kilroy and even a full-length film, though those relics probably deserve to be forgotten. Do you think Kilroy should see a revival? Comment below with some thoughts and subscribe to watch more fun-filled episodes.